finally sprung rather late and it's my usual area in the woods um, Alfie is just down by a stream well, it's, I'll call it a temperature, it's more spring well it's been very wet <coughs> it flows but I reckon by midsummer this stream will be gone and um, we'll have to wait until next winter um, it's not bad good day oh a skull look I wonder what's a skull of I'm gonna collect it I think anyway guys um, be back in a minute with a bit of a chat a major shout out for somebody and oh that's the stream I was talking about Look up there, it's a nice stream, very full of tannins because it's mostly leaf litter and the spring's up underneath that log. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a boat. Well, there we go guys, I'm cooking breakfast over an open fire. And uh, it's actually burning quite well. Got some nice, nice woody bits here and um, got to be careful because I'm using mostly sweet chestnut to burn. And that will spit very well, that will spit an awful lot, but at the moment, birch on there, some birch twigs, I found a branch that had blown down the other week, and I hung it up in a tree to um, basically dry out. So I'm going to um, get on with my breakfast, I've got, uh, I'll show you what I'll be cooking in a minute, I'm just going to get some water on in a minute to boil up and have a cup of tea with, get the important job out of the way first. See you in a minute guys. Well guys, that is my sort of breakfast for this morning. Uh, cooking in there is kidneys and smoked streaky bacon. Later on I will throw that in as well and have a sort of a stir fry type breakfast. And cook, I'll put the pan straight on the fire. Um, could have had a little griddle set up to drop the pan on but you know I've cooked this way before and it's always worked out quite well for me so I'm not too bothered. Um, should be quite a nice day. It's incredibly windy today. I mean it's really windy. Um, it's almost blown the fire out a couple of times. There's enough residual heat in that. So I'm just going to let this burn down. I've got my Trangia burner today, so I'm going to have a quick burn in a little while. I don't want to keep the fire going too long. It's just, I just want a fire just enough to cook the bacon. Right, it's about halfway cooked on the end, so let's put in. Don't forget to put some water on the fire. There's um, courgettes, um, red, yellow peppers, and enochia. Right, just pull them out. Right, those guys are Enochia fungi. Uh, you, you will find them growing in your local supermarket. Right, I'm just going to put a splash of water in there. And I've got a leaf somewhere here that I fashioned for this thing. Right. finish my tea off. Well there you go guys, I'm just going to let that cook away now. See you in a bit. Very nice, very nice. Very tasty this. Um, quite pleased with that. I put some of my uh, rams and pesto in it. It's quite powerful stuff that. I've got to tone it down a bit and I might make another batch. Still got some leaves and I'm actually doing some um, garlic butter with it. Make some to take them out until I like in a couple of weeks. It's not a bad day today. Uh, <coughs> believe it or not, one or two spots of rain. And I mean just it was really was just one or two spots of rain about well, I suppose about an hour and a quarter ago, just when I was start, starting to set up. Uh, my first real fire of the year. Uh, quite enjoyable it was to get together too. 
I bust out the best part of this year because it was just so damp, everything was just so damp and it wouldn't be so bad if it was a dry cold that we got we could get fire we could get fires going without too much effort. It takes a lot of effort to get a fire going around here because the weather is damp. Um, oh second brew. And um, it is, I mean I'm not a purist. When it comes to getting fires going, I'm not a purist. Uh, today, I there's a bit of there's a fallen pine tree at the bottom of the hill. A little bit of fat wood in the middle. I'm going to come out with an axe at some point and uh, harvest some of it. But I got some today, or the other day, should I say? And I used it today to get the fire going. And it's it's immensely satisfying when you can do it like that. I mean, yes, I use a lighter. Yes, I use. Um, matches. Um, I have wax board in my tinder kit plus birch bark and some fat wood and I use all, all of those um, so I'm not a purist if I, if I need to get a fire going you know you can sit there and spend an hour using a, a bow drill set or you can spend a couple of minutes with a fire flash. I like the fire flash because it's uh, an almost works in universal conditions piece of equipment. Um, I do have a flint and steel. Uh, it's, it's not in my tinder kit. It's indoors somewhere, and I do like using that sometimes. But you know, it, again, it's it's always uh, fire versus getting a brew on the go, and or purism, should I say? And getting a brew on the go, and with me, it's getting a brew on the go. Uh, you're supposed to do this job comfortably. Um, the idea, in my book, the idea of the fire flash is one step up from the flint and steel, and it helps get your fire going in most situations. Um, getting a proper preparation, I, I found some weeks ago, I found a uh, birch, top end of a birch on the ground, and, and there was enough on that today. I had that, as I say, I had that hanging up so it can keep relatively dry and it was bone dry. Um, great, got the fire going. And other than that, yeah, got the fire going. It was a nice breakfast as well. Uh, it's a nice, it was a nice meal. Um, good heavens, that was a loud train this morning. Um, it was nice to get it going, and it was a nice change. I, for some reason, I've gone off having fried eggs in the woods. It, it sounds bizarre, really, but it's just—I don't know. It's just that whole fry-up thing, you know. It's with the meal, with what I did today. I mean, I stir-fried it more or less, which also. And then I added a little bit of water and let it sort of stew a bit. Not a lot of water, just enough just to sort of keep it moist. What I need to do for that is to actually get my little wok out. Um, that pan I used this morning was okay, but I didn't feel it cooked it as well as it could have done. Uh, it took a little bit longer cooking, but that could have been the wood. That could have been the wind as well. Um, as far as the sort of bushcrafty, outdoorsy, woodsmansy well goes on, not not a lot has happened really in the past few weeks. Well, particularly in my neck of the woods. Um, I've got I'm going away in a few weeks, uh, back up to the Lake District for a long weekend. The spring forager. Looking forward to that. Foraging bits of foraging food up in the Lake District and um, cooking pigeon maybe. Uh, some of the stuff is supplied, some of it we go and get ourselves. Um, it's a good to have that mixture because in a real sense it's very much what we do. Very few of us I should think actually 100% forage our food when we go out. Uh, it's great just to go out with say a little bit of so a bit of steak or something and then hopefully count on the hope that you're going to find some forage greens. Um, I'm talking about greens, I made some pesto, my first, the first pesto of the year 
from Ramsons and boy was it powerful. I think I overdid the Ramsons a bit and the cheese and the ground almonds have been lost in the mix. It's nice, it's great on sausages and I put a little bit in my meal today. It adds a bit of seasoning. What I'm going to do is make some more up but I'm going to try and do it. I followed the method on this recipe card and it didn't come out as well as I thought. So I'm going to try it sort of a back to front method. I'm going to put the olive oil in first, then drop the cheese and then feed in the wild garlic little by little. So I'll get a, a more liquid consistency with the pesto rather than something that resembles a green paste. Which, I mean pesto means to, to grind into a paste but I would some, like something could look a bit looser. Great for stirring around your pasta. Great for having ma in mashed potatoes. We put some in our mashed potatoes the other day and it's really, really nice. It's got pale green mesh. Um, other than that, I was just saying, there's not a lot has been happening really. I think it's everybody's starting to wake up from the long, long winter we had and it was a really long winter. Um, I can't believe how how cold it was right up until sort of last week it was really bitterly cold for a long long time good in one sense bad in another uh, now I've started to keep an eye out open keep an eye out for the uh, chicken of the woods and St George's mushrooms I've been to my usual haunts for the chicken and nothing as yet no sign so it could be a few weeks but then again we have had a long winter um, other than that, Alfie's all right, and the world's all right. Now there's a, a shout out, a really, really big shout out for a guy called Patrick, who runs a thing on YouTube called Terra Firma Films. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this guy, he's doing a year. He's he's not wild camping the whole year, but he lives in Scotland and he's going out. Uh, for two or three days at a time while camping and he's filming it and he's doing this over a whole year. Um, subscribe to his channels, he's, he's, he's a really nice guy and he's, it's a really good, good and fine project he's doing. And it really, really needs some subscribers to his channel. So my friends, look him out. If I remember when I'm editing this, I shall try and put a little link along the bottom there. But it's, um, look him out really nice guy terra firma films um, he's got a facebook page as well which i think is called terra firma um, some odd bits coming up uh, there's a what i saw a bit on the news this morning about how moths hover that was quite interesting if you got access to the bbc website look it out on there quite an interesting piece and Big thing about bees at the moment, uh, the certain companies, uh, Sagenta and Bayer primarily, produce um, neonicotinoids, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is linked to um, bee death. And um, I haven't, I think I may have seen one bee so far this year. There hasn't been so many bees around. And it is quite chilling when you think about it. Without bees, 70% of our food just disappears. But other than that, anything else? Look out Sandy's channel. He's got a... He's bought a, a, a double poncho larvae based on a... I think a Polish army ponchos. Ah, quite a nice looking bit of kit. And it got me thinking again about sort of TP type shelters and I've got a rather large tarp and I might do a project on that. One of my projects I wanted to do over the winter and I never did get around to doing for various reasons was to make the to make the um, poly pipe bow, PVC bow. Um, it's still kicking around in the back of my mind. It's like some projects have got to have an end effect. I mean Going out and just using a bow and arrow would be would be great, and um, it, it's something. It's a project that's still there. Got a few other things kicking around in my head, 
but that's for future videos I think. Uh, at the moment it's clouded up a bit, I see a bit of blue, enough to make a bonnet I suppose, and God, them trees are really whippy today. Well, I'm going to go and test out this lens from the camera. When I bought this camera I've got the standard lens with the kit which was an 18 to 55 mil and this is a 55 to 200 mil lens and I'm just sort of having a little play around with it so when I take it up to the lakes maybe have some fun. Anyway guys I shall see you in a bit. It's been a grand week, the weather's on a turn, spring is here, bring it on.